So yeah, hey, uh, recording things, and it's recording my face, I think. Cool. So um, this share out is basically uh, make all things SSL. Um, actually, I'm not sure if that's true anymore, because like, isn't there like TLS and a bunch of other stuff? But anyways, uh, general idea, HTTPS, make all things like secure. So we're going to talk about, like, let's encrypt, rancher version uh, of that. Uh, and if there's time um, at the end, and we're kind of like not going like to the five like five o'clock mark, then I'll talk a little bit about the Rancher catalog and how all that works. So that should be kind of cool. Uh, the overview on it is like, why do we want to sell? I mean, I'm assuming that that's probably not like a huge, like, hey, why 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 do we want to do this? I think everybody should probably know, but we'll still kind of cover it. Um, kind of like a little bit of a workflow of how do you currently get certs. Um, has actually has anybody gone through the whole like rigmarole of getting an SSL cert and putting it on a web server and all that? How much of a pain in the ass that is? Okay, so one person. How big of a pain in the ass is it? Total pain in the ass. All right. Depending on like the really way. or not or no like so I I just did it with what you're let, let's encrypt for Kubernetes on drone and mm -hmm. honestly the bigger problem is trying to get through Kubernetes not the SSL cert but in the past I have used providers and it was a serious pain. Yeah, but you were, so with less encrypt, it was easy, but with other things, it was a pain in the ass. Yeah, because you're like waiting, they give you like a 24 hour moratorium on stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. And you have to have like a set IP and all that kind of crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so general idea behind this is um, we'll kind of go over it, but it's a pain in the ass. Uh, then we'll go over like what less encrypt is. Um, I'm going to be honest, I didn't dive down a whole lot into what less encrypt was. I just kind of like talked to it and I was like, ooh, this is cool. Let's see if I can get it working. And then like five minutes later, it was working. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I don't need to mess with this anymore. So I dug down a little bit more into it just to be able to have this on the slides. But overall, it, it was easy enough that I just kind of left it alone. <laughs> so yay. Um, and then we're going to go over a rancher container sample. So we'll actually like deploy a new service, create an SSL cert for it, and kind of like see how that lifecycle works and how it can be simple. And then at the end, uh, rancher catalog if there's time. So. Uh, so why SSL or HTTPS type stuff? Um, so obviously like encryption type jazz. So anything that's over HTTP is kind of like plain text, right? Unless I guess you could kind of maybe encrypt the data across, but that would be like hugely problematic from the client side having to do that, especially when you can just use HTTPS. Um, authentication of verifying and trusting who it is you're talking to. So um, I'm sure everybody's seen the hey, this cert is not valid for whatever server you're going to. Chrome has been like really nice in making that like extremely visible to, to you now. So you don't have like a fake website trying to be somebody else. Um, so a lot of that trust is come, it goes in there. Uh, oddly enough, for like PC, maybe not oddly enough, but something to note is like for uh, PCI, you, you are required to. So if you accept credit cards and all that kind of jazz, it has to be over uh, HTTPS. Um, quickly on HTTP2. Has anybody heard of HTTP2 coming around? Heard of it. Okay, so HTTP2 is basically a faster version of HTTP, uh, but it only supports HTTPS, so it's only uh, secure. It doesn't actually have like normal like HTTP anymore. Um, it allows, I don't know a shit ton about it, so like keep that in mind, but it allows you to do multiple simultaneous connections. There's also some implications on how you do development even like with resources of where now you can split out resources for like JavaScript uh, libraries and all that stuff. So you want to split it out. Before you would want to do one because it would be faster to load. But with HTTP2, you can split it out and make it faster. That's beyond the, this conversation, but just stuff to know about. But with HBS, that's the only way you can have HTTP2. You can't do like normal un unencrypted. So something to note, which makes it interesting because normally HTTPS is slower than HTTP. But HTTP2 secure is faster than unencrypted HTTP. So kind of rad. Current overview. So kind of like some of the general steps over like if we were to do a normal cert, you have to usually have a dedicated IP address. You go and buy a cert from like an authority. I think it's usually around 100 bucks a year or something like that. Uh, that sounds about right from the last time Somewhere I did it. But that was $1,500. What's that? Somewhere like 1500 bucks. Holy crap, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Because they lock it to like they'll lock it to subdomains and weird mm -hmm. pathing and stuff like that. 
So anyways, super expensive. Well, I guess not super expensive, but relatively expensive depending on what you're doing. I know you can get some for a hundred bucks, but like keep that in mind. Um, a lot of times they're, they're hard coded to a specific domain. So there's a concept of wild cards where you can go like star dot something dot com and then it would be all of them within that domain. But then those are way more expensive than say like www dot whatever dot com being encrypted. So things to keep in mind. You have to generate a CSR. I'm not going to go into the whole process, but basically you have to have a private key. You generate a private key and a public key. You create a certificate something request. What Does anybody know what CSR stands for? Something sign request or certificate sign request or I don't know, some letter acronym that's a request of where by doing that, you're using your public key to sign the request so that they can generate a certificate or you're using your private key. Well, one of your keys you're using to like make that request. Then they give you back a cert, so then you can install that cert with your private key to verify the fact that you are who you are, to then install it with the app to use it. I, does that, I mean, the, that kind of gets to the point that it's just a huge pain. Um, you have to know a bunch about like private keys, public keys, certificate request, certs, then there's different formats and blah, blah, blah. And then you have to put it in Apache. It was like the old, old school days and all that stuff. And then when your certificate expires, you have to do this whole rigmarole again, um, which I don't know how often it expired, but I think it was like every year or every like couple of years or something like that. And note that Windows Azure still holds the record for most downtime for their entire cloud service because someone didn't want to do their certificate. <laughs> how long was that? It's like 36 hours. That's hilarious. So... So anyways, a uh, pain in the ass. So why let's encrypt? And it's like, it's kind of funny because uh, somebody was talking to me at one point in time about let's encrypt and I was like, yeah, let's encrypt, let's. Uh, I didn't realize it was an actual product. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Um, the cool thing about it, it's free. <laughs> so we're like, yay, we don't have to spend any money. Uh, automated and open. Um, actually, it's free, automated and open. I think it's part of their slogan. I think I stole that off their site. Um, but it's actually really true because it's free, automated, and open, which I was like, yay. Uh, and it's really a quick way of getting an X509 cert onto your server without knowing much, uh, which is totally true because I didn't know anything about what New World Less Encrypt was, and in like five, 10 minutes, I had encrypted certs. So I was like, yay. And it's a set of tools uh, and free authority to do all the hard work, uh, which is really, really, really cool. So... Rancher examples. So I'm go basically what I'm going to touch on is using Rancher to simplify a little bit of this. That way we don't have to do a lot of command line tools and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's also using the Route 53 integration to be able to validate. So there's a couple things that you do have to know, right? Is you have to prove that you own that domain, right? So they're not just going to give you a cert for Microsoft.com, for example. That would be ludicrous. Uh, you don't own Microsoft.com and that would just not be a good way to do it. So a lot of times the way that you prove whether you own a domain or not is you can add like text records or certain records on the DNS because if you can control the DNS server that hosts that, assumingly you have control of it, which makes sense. I mean, I think that's a, probably a valid assumption. And uh, what we're gonna go, so I'll go over like how that's set up currently on our example. And then we're gonna go through adding a new subdomain and show how to update the cert to handle it. So it's pretty simple overall. So now let's go into Chrome land. Ooh. And let's not go on Facebook. Let's go into our rancher instance. Do, 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 do. And here we are. And so the interesting aspect, and let me actually go into Route 53, so let's do our AWS stuff. That way we can kind of see what it looks like in Route 53. Give this my account, Route 53. And what we're going to see is I've already done all, some of the setting up, and you guys could totally try this on your own accounts or whatnot. It's really, really painless, which is kind of rad. 
So here what we're going to see is that there should be, you can kind of see that there's like this kind of stuff, like this challenge, Acme challenge thing, I imagine is from this. I'm not entirely certain if that's where it came from, but I didn't create this and it magically appear, appeared after I started doing a Let's Encrypt. So I'm assuming that, that that was their way to validate that I owned the domain. But in the Rancher catalog, if we were to do, and let me, hopefully I can actually launch a Let's Encrypt from here. Okay, so this is just a rancher container in which what you can do is create a new stack of it where you say, hey, yes, I agree to the terms of service. Terms of service. Yeah, for this. You can say like what kind, you can actually create sandbox certs from them. Um, you can give it, like this is a rancher specific thing of certificate names. So what happens is whatever certificate it generates there's this certificate store for Rancher that is going to inject it in. Um, if you weren't using Rancher, it would just be a location on your server that you could say, hey, grab this list encrypt and put my cert in this location on my server. But in this case, it just makes it a little bit simpler for us. Uh, we describe what domains we want to have the signed certs for. Now, the key here with using it with AWS and Route 53 is these have to be domains controlled by Route 53. So that's just something to, to know about. Um, I think cloud is Cloudflare. I think Cloudflare and DigitalOcean, DNS Simple. If you look at all these, these are all other DNS providers. So if you're using any of these DNS providers to control your domain, it doesn't have to be Route 53, right? It's as long as you have a key and the secret for any of these DNS service providers, you could use this container even without it being AWS, right? It's all it's going to do is say, hey, I'm going to put like this little key or whatever on the DNS thing, and I'm going to create my cert and download it and make it, make it accessible for you. So what does this look like when it's running? So if we go into like our user infrastructure here. So what we can see here is we have like a few different stacks that have different services. Um, it doesn't really matter what all the details are really. Route 53, all it does is it creates DNS records for us based on services we have. So that's not really to do with encrypt, but it makes life a little simpler for us. Let's Encrypt is the actual service that got created. So um, all it is is this little service that like hangs out and checks every now and then if our certs have expired. So if we were to look at like the details of what that looks like, and actually, I'm not going to do that because there's a... API key and secret for our AWS account on here. <laughs> um, and if it's on a video, I'm going to be like, hey, here, like here's the key and secret to do whatever the hell you want. So let's not do that. But the general thing that you need to know is in here from the catalog, all it's going to do is have things where actually, let me see. Ah, oh, damn it. I could cut it right away. To your face when you share private stuff. You can? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, let's do that. Then, um, or we can blur it out maybe. The thing that matters here is these domains. This is what we get domains requested for based on, or I can just change the key in secret later too. You could do that, but yeah. then you'd have to do work. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. Let's blur it out. Um, so what's going to happen, for example, here we can see that there's all like these subdomains, right, where we have like web, ascent, blah, 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 master, peloton, uh, and a, a few things. So literally to create, like if we wanted to update our service to have a new SSL cert uh, for a new domain, um, let's say, what do we want to deploy? Anybody, can, can anybody think of anything that we might want to deploy? Deploy a node application so we can show the speed differences between that and Java. Yeah, <laughs> let's not do that. What's the hello world uh, container? World container docker. There's like, not that one. Oh, the little, yeah, the Tutum like Cloud, hee hee, he, hello world thing. Um, yeah, cool. Because that gives us something on, what, does anybody know what port, oh, it's by default is port 80. Right? Yeah, so that's port 80. So what we can do is let's create a new test stack. And we're going to create a quick service. Um, wait, let me... Let's call that web. So it'll be like web.test.something. And then we're going to call this hello world. We're going to do a port map real quick. That's going to be exposing, let's say, 6,900. <laughs> 6,900. <laughs> Sorry, okay. 
Um, and so that's going to deploy. And what should happen here from this simple service is when we hit port 6900, once it's active, we should see like a little thing that says, hey, cool, cool guy. Um, you know, this is awesome, uh, but not in encrypted. So let's see if that's right. Okay, so sweet. So not encrypted. And if we were to go to like HTTPS, I mean, hell, it actually doesn't even really know what to do here. The interesting thing, and I'll touch on this real quick, the Route 53 thing, what it does is it's going to create an environment based on the stack and the service. So here we should see something like test, web test. That's what we just created, which is kind of rad if you ask me, like the fact that like it just automatically created that automatically and all that does. But what we can know is like say for one, like if I do this, oh whoops. Let's go to this DNS entry for one and do 6900. I should see the same thing, so sweet, so that works. Um, however, what becomes kind of intriguing here is if I do HTTPS, right, like probably nothing is gonna work. Um, and actually it says, yeah, look, it's cert not common name. So basically FU, I don't know in what the world, it's not secure. There's like really nothing there that it can do. Um, so what we can do is for this guy, which is here, we're going to go in here, go into our stack, and in Let's Encrypt, say, look, we want to also have our certificate handle web test prod seattleslow.com. Let's upgrade that. It's going to be unhealthy because it's saying, hey, you stopped my service and I need to do something about that. So let's see. Now, if we see our logs, it's kind of interesting. It's saying found an existing Seattle search, blah, blah, blah. It said stored cert does not have matching domain names. Um, normally, it would say stored cert has matching domain names. This basically said, oh, look, you added a new domain, and the cert that I have doesn't have that domain. So I need to go and do, I'm going to try to obtain a certificate that matches all these domains that I've added into it. Which is kind of cool, because after a while, it's going to say, yeah, sweet, you have it. In this case, um, I'm actually using the load balancer that we have here, which is a load balancer that uh, allows us to route based on the domain stuff, uh, which is, in my mind, pretty rad. So we're going to add a new service rule that says, hey, this is, what did I say, this guy. I'm going to make this HTTPS. I'm going to choose a service which was, was it like test web? So what this is saying is any time that you <coughs> hit web test prod Seattle slow on HTTPS at this, route it to my web traffic on port 80. That's a local internal port. That's not the exposed port that I gave it earlier. So that's the port that the container is exposing, not the port that was exposed on the host. Uh, Probably don't worry about that too much since the talk's not about like how rancher and containers and all that stuff works, but for anybody that knows what that is, then it'll make sense. Um, and then it's going to say use this certificate, which has like a bunch of domains that uh, it supports over HTTPS. These are all this, this is essentially the cert that got uploaded by Let's Encrypt. So now we're going to edit it. It's going to update this, be like, yay, good, go. And now let's see what that looks like now. And now it's encrypted, and that's it. So now we have a valid cert that's from an authority that's not self-encrypted and whatever. Doesn't give us the like silly warning of WTF, why are you going to this website? It's not certified, and we're done. So that's the that's general gist of it. I kind of flew through it um, as far as like, hey, here, configure this, do that, blah, blah, blah. However, in setting it up, 
all the things I just did, it's the same thing on setting it up. It was you add the domain, you fill in the little blanks on the key, and done. If you're doing it not through Rancher, it's a little bit tougher because you need to have now the cert. But as far as getting the cert, it's just as easy as what I just did, which is leaps and bounds simpler than it's ever been in my mind before so of whatever I've had. If, if I'm understanding correctly, um, basically, once you set up a Let's Encrypt uh, service on your Docker, it'll automatically go and get the certs for you. You don't have to do it. Or is that a feature of Let's Encrypt? So Let's Encrypt gives you some tools to be able to do that in different ways. Okay. The reason why this was so simple is because there's actually a Docker container specifically for Rancher mm -hmm. that will go and say, look, this is a service that's running on my server mm -hmm. that continuously goes and pulls for, like, it'll update the certificate when it expires. It handles all that. So it's just a service that runs on server that says, go and handle all this stuff for me because I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to have to worry about it in a year. Yeah. So when my certificate expires, it's just going to get me a new one, like, I think three months before it expires. Which is kind of rad. So, so that's really kind of it. Like, what other question? Anybody have questions around this part? I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like night and day between just a few years ago trying to do search yeah. for this junk. Well, I remember last the last time before this that I tried to set up a SSL to like work and everything. It took me like half a day. Yeah. To like try to hunt it down and all this kind of stuff. And that was half a day on a hosted service mm -hmm. of trying to get it all set up. Before that, when it was like my own service with Apache and getting Apache to run and get set up the certs and all that stuff, that was like, okay, two days worth of work. And now, 20 minutes mm -hmm. or 15 minutes or whatever it was. Um, like, And now that I have it set up to add a new domain takes me like... I mean, I even like took some time to explain some other crap and that took a total of 20 minutes. Actually, not even 20 minutes. Like, come on. Like, that's just insane. There's a so, talk by Kelsey Hightower where he set up a container that every time he shows the demo, it literally goes out and redoes his cert and grabs it. Mm -hmm. So that w whatever he's doing, whatever whatever domain it might be, it just grabs a new cert for it every time. And he yeah. shows that in the demo, the Kubernetes demo, which was super slick. Yeah. And I remember fighting through that. Like, like the actual setup of of SSL in Elastic Beanstalk for AWS was pretty straightforward. Like you click blocks and said, I want HTTPS, and you gave it your cert. But uh -huh. the process of going through that beforehand to just get the file was stupid. Yeah, it's an hours yeah. for some, I, I don't know, a person or a thing or <coughs> to do something, to right? Me. And it was just seriously, I'm like, give me an API, give me something. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Let's Encrypt has definitely made that so, so much simpler, which is rad. And especially when you're using it with Rancher or some kind of service that just automates all this, it's just insanely fast. So.